Hello, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. If you are in central Minnesota, like me, uh, if you're on the West Coast, good morning. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the Wonder Series. Today is Wonder Series Wednesday, and this is your weekly opportunity to wonder how life would be if you thought about it differently, if you acted differently and opened your mind and changed your mindset. Who would you be? What would you create? And then ultimately, how will this help you live that healthy, happy life that you have been dreaming of? Hi, everyone. I'm Denise Stiegel. I'm the CEO and curator at livinghealthylist.com and your host of the Wonder Series. Um, this month, we are focusing on something that we all want to do, and that's be a little bit better every day. So my guest today, I'm really excited because I know she's going to help us to be able to do that. Uh, my guest today is Sheila Sutherland. Uh, she's a life skills strategist certified in social and emotional intelligence. I love this. She is a professional educator, speaker, and host of the Reignite Your Purpose podcast, best-selling author, very cool, and is the only, get this one, only O-Shift facilitator in Canada. Uh, Sheila empowers people to effectively manage their emotions through shifting <laughs> their mindset, or better yet, their heart set, which we want to talk about, their behaviors and communication so they can live a more authentic, connected, and vibrant life. There's a connection here, isn't there? Hi, Sheila. How are you today? Hi, Denise. I am wonderful. I'm so excited to be here. I, we, I know we've been talking about this for weeks, and I, was, I woke up this morning with, it's finally here. <laughs> so I was so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's great. It's, you know, I love connecting with um, with coaches who are doing things in a different way. You know, I think we hear the word coach and we're like, oh, a coach, you know, what do you do? And then when you hear what a coach really does, it really what when I read your your um, your bio, I, I mean, I was so wowed by all of the cool things that you have incorporated in your coaching um in your coaching career. So thank you so much for being here and, and sharing with us today. Well, you know, and it's kind of funny because from my perspective, I kind of went, oh, I'm just another one of coaches that are out there and, oh, I'm not good enough. You know, like I have those things just like everybody else does, right? You know, and it, and again, it's that it's our managing of those wonderful little, you know, voice that it's in the back of our head trying to kind of pull us back and keep us safe. and. And I'm like, but I must know more. And you're like, no, you don't. And so this is constant fight in my head sometimes that I have to deal with. And so thank you for for seeing that, oh, maybe I am a little bit different because sometimes I'm not so sure. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I know we all kind of, you know, we're all unique in our own ways. We all see things differently. And, you know, when we're curious about ourselves and, and what intrigues us, that's when I think we kind of go at go that little bit further. And yes, sometimes get that next certification or whatever it might be. But I think it's that curiosity that we have that really can help other people yes. to up level their life. Well, and that's kind of, you know, you're speaking my language there because I think curiosity is like my middle name. It's been that, you know, since I was a kid, right? Because I was the kid that was like, well, why? Well, why? And I must have just drove my parents insane because they're like, I don't know. <laughs> and so I, so I had to find out. Right. And so mm -hmm. that's what led me, you know, my first path of, of studying biology, because I, you know, you see all these creatures, you see the environment that we, we live in. And I'm like, well, why is that that way? And why does that do that? And so that's what first sent me down that path of curiosity of just dis of discovering all of that. But you know, the when I look at what I do in coaching, I was my experiment, right? Because it was I was trying to figure out more about me. Mm -hmm. And because I was going through some stuff, you know, we all go through stuff, but I was in a I was in a pivotal moment, what I call a pivotal moment for myself. And I'm kind of like, okay, I have two paths I can go here. Like, which way am I going to go? Like, it was that that proverbial crossroads. Mm -hmm. And I so I started doing this discovery and, oh, well, let me try this and let me try that, um, you know, type of thing. And I went, okay, well, that one didn't work, but, oh, let's do this one. 
And then I found the stuff that really made me curious. So then that's what I continued down that path. And like you say, when you talk about the social emotional intelligence, and now I'm, I'm actually doing a certification in neuroscience because I'm trying to find out more about our brain. Like we really don't know a whole lot yeah. where our brain is concerned. So I'm like fascinated about all these things and how it just, it comes into play in every part of our life. But the, one of the one things that I love that you said about, you know, the, the curiosity part of it and that being that little bit more is it empowers us to take control of our life. Yes. You know, yes. we're not just sitting back in the, you know, the passenger seat, watching it all go by. Now, granted we can, that is a choice we can make. And a lot of people, I will say, do that. But I love when people go, no, wait a minute, I can do this. I have control of this. I, I am the, what's I'm trying to think of the, the, the term that I've, but it's, I'm, I'm the creator of my own destiny kind of thing, right? And it sounds very kind of cliche, but it's true. But it's true. You know, so I, I love that you're fostering that with your audience and the people that are listening and watching. Because, you know, if you've got that, that slight little inkling about anything, follow it. It may not lead to something, but it also might do something even greater. Mm -hmm. So why not let's let's just just be curious let's become kids again and follow that curiosity i was just thinking that because when we're children we do have that curiosity like you said it's about, and it's about everything you know everything we come across every person every thing that we see um i remember when i was in school i love i was one of the i was one of those nerdy kids i loved going to school because i was excited to to know what i was going to learn next and I think, you know, I, I, I kind of wonder, here's my word, wonder. I wonder when, because there was definitely a time in my life that I was less curious. And I think it was at that time when we kind of do what we're expected to do. Mm -hmm. I went to college. I got a job. I worked too many hours. <laughs> you know, all of those things. And I'm so grateful that I got to a point where I could say, okay, so this isn't, this isn't fulfilling me. Yeah. I'm not happy. What do I need to do to change? And I guess that's, that's a big part of it is, is recognizing that there is something more out there and that if you're not happy in where you are, um, to recognize that. And that's the first step to making a change. Almost oh, definitely. And, you know, I find that, say, our generation, because I think we're probably pretty close in age, but like, we are a generation that was still, we still dealt with a lot of weight of expectation, right? We started down a path and we're like, oh, my God, I'm not allowed to change. You know, I chose this path 10 years ago and I must stay here, you know, because our parents were the ones that you know, they chose a job and they were there for 40 years. That doesn't exist anymore, you know? And I, I'm looking now at my nieces who are, you know, late 20s, early 30s. And, you know, I was, I was actually visiting with them this weekend. And one of them is making a big change. Like she had, she chose, finally chose her career. She, you know, she's, this is going to be it. She, she's been in it for about three or four years now. She realized after a little while, she wasn't as happy as she thought she would be. Mm. Now, like us, we put away, oh, I'm just going to stick to it. I'm going to soldier through. I'm going to keep going. But she's like, I'm not happy. And this is one thing I love about the, the younger generation is I think they're learning from us and they're learning at an earlier age of, you know what, this doesn't serve me. So why am I torturing myself? Mm-hmm. You know, so yesterday was her first day back at school. She decided to go go back to school and try something different. And I'm like, good on you. Good for her. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, yes, she knows it's going to be tough. Yes, it's going to be a lot of work. Yes, there's going to be sacrifices. And some people aren't going to agree with you. And some people are going to say, oh, you're doing the wrong thing. But she's living her life. Right. Right. And I know for me. Uh, so part of my story is I spent all, so much of my time living my life for other people, mm -hmm. you know, and it finally got to that point where I was like, what am I doing? 
you know what like i am i'm stressed i'm burnt out mm. i am not fulfilled and yet i'm i'm constantly being doing or busy doing things for other people what about me mm -hmm. And it's that shifting of the mindset of, I need to be a priority. My, my feelings, my emotions, my needs, they matter. Mm -hmm. Not saying that everybody else's don't too, but right. I, mine needs to be taken first. Like I really have to take care of me first or I've got nothing to serve or to give or to support for other people. And that was a huge shift for me because I thought, oh my God, people are going to judge me. People are going to think I'm selfish. Oh, you know, blah, 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 like all that, that noise. But since I have been doing that, it's like, oh, I feel lighter. There's this thing called happiness. Oh, dare I say joy, you know, <laughs> Ooh, you know? <laughs> I know, you know, people look at me and go, you're just, you're, you, you do, you just seem so lighter, the air around you, like your joy just, it emanates out of you. And I'm like, well, good. Cause I'm like, that's about time yeah. because I, I felt so heavy before. Like I've just, I felt like the weight of everything on me. And, you know, I'll say that in my opinion, ages you faster. You know, I've had people come to me and go, you're 51. And I'm like, yeah, I am. And they're like, you, do, you, one, you don't act it. Two, you certainly don't look it. And I'm like, well, you know what? If you look at pictures of me when I was in my 20s, I looked like I was probably late 40s mm -hmm. because I was had the weight of the world. I had all of this stuff that was draining, like literally draining my life force out of me. And I, my, so my best aging tip is get rid of that stuff. I love it. Right? Live for you. You will actually age in reverse because I feel like that's what's been happening with me. And the feedback I'm getting from people, it's like, oh, it's not just in my head. <laughs> you know? No, it's true. I'm, I'm so glad you and I, you and I have, you know, similar path because I remember thinking the same thing when I was in my twenties. I was tired all the time. I, you know, I went to work, so I did what I was supposed to do, but. I didn't do half of the things that I really wanted to do. I mean, obviously, sometimes you have to do the things you have to do in order to get to do the things you want to do. I understand that. But at the same time, if you're never getting to do the things you want to do, which is truly what I felt, what was the point? I really got to the, to a place where I was like, what is the point of all of this? Right. And I think you're right. It's just, it's that that mindset shift and i don't know if it's just we get to a point where <laughs> shift happens <laughs> i love that by the way oh yeah <laughs> or do do you know do we need a kick in the pants is that what we need unfortunately some of us do and i know i was one of them right because again i was like oh i'm just gonna soldier up and you know keep going along keep doing my thing and I kept getting all these, you know, signs, or if you want to call them. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'll deal with you later. <laughs> and the next one would show up. And I'm like, yeah, 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 again, you know, just putting it off and putting it off and sweeping it under the rug until, you know, whatever, universe, God, whatever you want to call it, kind of went, you're not listening. I'm going to make you listen. And I actually, you know, I went through the trauma of losing my house to a fire, losing everything. And my life came to an immediate stop. Wow. And I was just like, you know, it was the WTF moment when I'm like, what, what do I do now? Like mm -hmm. for the first time in my life, I didn't have the answer. Mm -hmm. And that was a really uncomfortable space for me because I always have the answer. People come to me for answers. You know, at that point in time, I was a high school teacher and I was like, I'm all about the answers and I couldn't do it. Wow. And my body, my, you know, my brain, everything shut down. Like I, I went into this space of like, I just, I, I'm in limbo. I don't get, I don't know what to do, but it was something that I needed. You know, I call it now that it was my cosmic kick in the pants. <laughs> And I, I needed it because I'm stubborn. 
I know I am. That's one of one of my faults. I'm. I mean, I'm Scottish and Ukrainian. I'm. I can't get much more stuff. Okay. Yeah, you know? I'm, I'm like I know people who are both Scottish and Ukrainian. I'm like and put them together. Ooh, you, yeah, you're just, right? you're just tough minded. Well, exactly. You have to give me some really good stat and being a scientist too, right? You have to give me some stats that are really going to change my mind about something, right? <laughs> I live with yeah. that guy, by the way. There you go. The same way. Oh my gosh. You know. <laughs> So, so yeah, I needed that. My wish for other people is not to get to that point because it, it was not fun. It was a tough space. You know, I went into a really dark time for, you know, I, I, I call it for about six months. I was, I don't even really remember um, a lot of that time because I completely disassociated from life. And I finally dawned on me one morning, this is not what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. this is not my life. This was not the plan. When I look at say who I was as the teenager being all uh, graduating from high school where I've got the whole world as my oyster type thing, this was not on that list. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but the only thing that's going to change it is if I change me, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm the one that's responsible here. I have to change how I'm reacting to the world. I have to change what I, how I'm showing up in the world. Like it, it's me, it's all on me. I can't blame as much as I could try. I can't blame it on the circumstances and the people. Yeah, I, I went through some things. I went through, th through some things that I didn't have control of. Like it wasn't my fault that the fire happened, but how I reacted to it, how I moved on from it was all on me. Mm -hmm. I could choose to stay being in a victim state or I could choose to use it to propel me to be the victor. Mm. And thankfully I chose that route. And I will say, I'll be honest, it, again, it's not an easy route. Yeah. Change is never easy, mm -hmm. but true. it's worth it. So worth it. Like I am now, like I'm now, what is it now? 11 years past that moment. I can look back at that moment with so much gratitude, mm -hmm. like so much. Now, if someone would have told me that right after, I would have told you, you were crazy. Yeah. How could I be grateful for going through a trauma like that? But now I am mm -hmm. because it, it shifted my life out of this this rut that I was in, like I was, I was not in a good space before all of that happened. You know, again, I was getting in the burned out. I was getting very, very angry, very cynical. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't like who I was before that all that happened. I don't think I would have changed from that had that not, have I had, I not gotten that kick in the pants. I could, I, I can understand that. It's funny when you said cynical, I thought of myself back in the day, when in, in a relationship, how I had gotten very cynical at that time because things were not working out. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know, I had made decisions that I thought were good decisions, you know, yeah. a really good job and, you know, more money and all of that. And I was miserable, which meant I was making the other person miserable. Didn't know that, didn't recognize that, of course. But it was when at all kind of fell apart that I had same thing. I had to step back and go, all right, now what? And you're, I didn't like the person I was at that point. Yeah. So obviously you and I both had your, your trauma much more um, traumatic than mine. I mean, I had to break up and I lost a job. Um, which hey, it's still traumatic. But it I, is, I, yeah. And, you know, and I, I don't, I never want to go, oh, my trauma is bigger than your trauma, I kind of, you know, kind of thing, that whole comparison thing, right? Because I could go through the breakup and losing the job like you, and it would have hit me in a different, completely different way, right? So it's just as big. Yeah, good point, good point. But so, but both of us went through something and had to get come out the other end, and we had that choice. So how do we help people today? make those choices and make those those changes you know a little bit better a little bit different whatever it might be every day before they hit that wall that rock bottom that wtf moment oh shift moment yes <laughs> well and it and a part of it is, is being really honest with yourself mm. you know because honestly i think 
the app we 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 like to lie to ourselves oh everything's fine i'm okay i've never said that yeah like <laughs> fine is like the worst four letter f word that there is out there i honestly believe <laughs> and as women we are really bad at saying oh i'm fine yeah. i'm fine while we're gritting our teeth and like the the vein is pulsing <laughs> in our head i'm fine yep <laughs> I'm going to call BS on that, right? It's it's really take even yourself a quiet moment. Now, I know that sometimes even finding a quiet moment nowadays is tough. But just really taking stock of your life and being really honest with it, you know, and, and compartmentalize it. So physically, are you happy where you are? Like, are you feeling tired? Are, are you getting the exercise that you need? Are you getting the sleep that you need? Uh, is there nutrients that you're missing? Have, when was the last time you saw the doctor, right? You know, it's taking care of that side of things. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at yourself from, say, from the, the mental and emotional side of things, do you, how are you on your boundaries? Like, do you have people that walk all over you? Do you have, do you allow people to talk a certain way to you? Do you allow people to bully you in certain ways? Right. So really looking at all these different pieces. Now, when you're making all these, the, say the list, I'm a list person. So I mean, do it however oh, works for you. So am I. But, Hence the name living healthy list. To right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like a mile long. Um, it may it may really feel overwhelming. Yeah. But this is where we're going to look at how can I be better that one step better today? So I wake up in the morning and I'm like, OK, how am I feeling? Okay, so maybe I'm I'm feeling a little heavy, I'm feeling down, I'm not, you know, what can I do to shift that energy? Mm. Right, because one of the things, I, I always remember I was at this conference uh, and uh, Tony Robbins was there. And he said, if you wanna shift your physical state, or if one of you shift your energetic state, you must shift your physical state. Mm. Because energy, you know, that is or you're, when you're in, when you can get your body in motion, that is your emotion, like energy in motion. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times if I wake up and I'm just like, oh, you know, just kind of like, you know, like Eeyore, right? They got the cloud over my head and I'm like, yeah, here I am, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> I will put on, I know I've got a couple of songs that just soon as they go on, I can't sit still. Everybody's got them, right? No, have them somehow pre-programmed into you. And I'm going to say this quietly mm -hmm. into your Alexa. I just don't want mine to bing, go off. <laughs> but, you know, have it pre-programmed wherever, right? So that when you're in that state, take five minutes in the morning, dance around your house, do it nude if you have to, <laughs> keep the blinds closed. The cats will look at you like, what the heck is our problem? <laughs> Even if you're not a dance, dance like you're a funky chicken. I don't care, right? Get your body moving. And I can't remember where I heard it too. There was another conference I was at where they talked about just shaking, like just shaking your body. You know, because if you look at it like a dog, at a cat, a, you know, a moose even, mm -hmm. if they've gone through something, they shake their whole body to shake whatever that is. They, it's physically shaking off whatever that experience was so they can move on. Mm -hmm. We have a tendency to keep uh, like a, a tight fist grip on every experience. You're right. So if we can just get up and just put on that music, shake your arm, shake your legs, shake your body, I will guarantee within five minutes, you're going to feel completely different. Mm -hmm. You've now shifted your yourself to make give yourself that one step better for your day. I love that. That's you know, great. So, so, I I mean, thinking, okay, so, so what's one of your songs? Oh, goodness, I got to think this is going to sound really kind of maybe kind of stupid and it's going to kind of age me, but I've already told you my age. I love Eye of the Tiger. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I just do. I always have. So I put it on and because I, I also used to be a boxer. Like I used to I really loved going to the boxing gym all the time. Well, it really was the thrill of the fight. Right. <laughs> but, then, but when I listen to the words of it, right, it just, you know, talking about getting back up by like getting yourself back in like the words feel empowering to me. And so that so that would be my advice to pick a song that's got some empowering words. And there are a lot out there, you know, words that just speak to your soul. So I will put that on 
and I will kind of start, I'll actually put myself into a boxer stance and I'll be kind of, you know, bopping and weaving around here. And I get a little bit of a mini workout at the same time, right? <laughs> Exactly. Five minutes of doing that, like I am, I, the heart's pumping and the blood's flowing. My body feels a million times better. But I mean, I also like Pharrell's happy, right? Happy. That's a good one. Exactly. Yeah. Something that's catchy, whatever. Like, it could be anything, mm -hmm. right? But it's, it just, it gets me moving. Yeah. And so that's, that's like one of a billion different strategies you can do. But then another one I'm just, you know, I'm going to throw in there is in regards to gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know, we all know it. We've all heard it. We probably go, yeah, yeah. You know, I've, I've heard it a bazillion times. But my question for you is, do you practice it? Mm -hmm. Is it a daily habit that you that you actually partake in? And I mean, I have to remind myself to do it because you know, I get busy. I get, you know, in the, the hamster wheel of life like everybody else. And I have to dial myself back and go, I haven't done this for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And I've really been actually focusing on it a lot these last couple of days. And I kind of go, first thing in the morning, what am I grateful for? I'm sitting on the edge of my bed. I don't really want to open my eyes yet. You know, I'm, I'm convincing my myself to get up and get out. <laughs> What am I grateful for? Mm -hmm. But the really big one for me is the last thing at night. I'm now lying in bed. My eyes are closed. I may have gone through a completely crappy day, yeah. but there is always something to be grateful for. But, and it's not just to say, oh, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. Say why you're grateful. I if love you can that. Get, yeah, get the why that. in there, get the emotion in there it digs it in deeper and we're reprogramming ourself. We're reprogramming our brain in that moment to look for more things to be grateful for. And you will find, even if you stick with it for seven days, like give yourself a, a mini seven day challenge of I'm going to do this morning and night. I'm going to, you know, spend five minutes and be grateful. I guarantee by the end of that seven days, you're going to feel a shift. And then you're going to go for another seven days and then another seven days. And before you know it, you're going to forget, you're going to stop counting because it's been just part of you. Mm -hmm. And you will find that that, that tiny little simple, easy things mm -hmm. can have a huge impact. So, you know, so I always advise people like, just because it sounds really simple and easy, don't discount it. I would agree. You know, it, it's, they can have big, big impact. You know, the uh, Jim Quick, uh, the author of Limitless says, little by little, we become a lot. Love right. That. So it baby steps, mm -hmm. even if it's one step forward that you make in a day, within a week, you'll be able to turn around and go look how far I've come. So true. So true. I'm going to ask this question and it's just something that popped into my mind. So do you, is there a connection with gratitude and emotional intelligence? It is. Yeah. There, it actually, it, when you look at the action of gratitude, it actually, even from the positive psychology standpoint, it, because it is the reprogramming of our, our brain to look for positive things, you know, in our environment, it allows us to shift our emotions easier, mm -hmm. right? Because it is, a, I don't want to say like, there's, there's a tendency to go, oh, I've got good emotions. I've got bad emotions. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They're just emotions. They all tell us something, right? But it's up to you how you're going to shift and how you're going to move through them. And I think but, but how I have found anyways, when I'm doing this practice of gratitude, when I'm really uh, like one of the one of the big uh, kind of, I'm not saying the proper word, kind of like foundations of emotional intelligence is awareness, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's that really deep personal awareness of where you are and understanding of, you know what? I'm not feeling so great today. I may be, I may be in like in a, just an angry, frustrated, irritated moment. And that's okay. 
you are exercising emotional intelligence by being having that awareness and then maybe letting your partner know, hey, this is where I'm at today. I'm going to apologize now for if I'm, you know, if I'm short with you in any way. But being that you've you've vocalized your awareness about you're less likely to react, mm -hmm. right? Because you're not trying to hold it back, right? Because mm -hmm. I find that when we're in those, say, irritated, frustrated moments, when I'm you've got this, I don't know about you, I feel it all in here, in my chest, in my yeah. throat, like all the emotion just wants to like literally puke on whoever mm -hmm. might be around me. If I have that awareness that it's there, I'm taking my power back from it. I'm not allowing it to have power over me. And I find that if when I do that, I'm like, okay, I'm aware that it's there. I'm gonna do the best I can today. Mm -hmm. Uh, what can I do to shift this? So again, everyone's got their things of how to move through, like what's causing this? Like, where is this coming from? You know, ask yourself those questions. I mean, it may sound like, oh, you're going to be sitting here having a discussion with yourself for like an hour. <laughs> Honestly, it's only like a couple minutes of going, okay, what is this about? Where is this coming from? <laughs> you know, how can I be more aware of this so that I don't puke this emotion all over the people yes. around me? Mm -hmm. I right. think that's a very good point. And I think a lot of people, especially in the last, whatever this has been, year and a half with the pandemic, um, we do have those emotions. And I know sometimes when people are home alone, I mean, I work from home anyway, but you know, for mm -hmm. the last year and a half, I really had no place to go. And so when my husband would come home, I almost felt like I was pouncing on him. Not in a bad way. Like I said, yeah. not in a bad way. He's my husband, right? Yes. I <laughs> hope you pounce was, on him at some points, but yes. <laughs> But like I did, I had like, whether it was emotion or thoughts, all these things. And you're right, kind of just here. Yeah. And I realized at one point that, okay, he's having his thing too. Yeah. And so to really be able to step back and say, okay, what's going on here? Is it because I haven't talked to anybody today, you know, other than myself? Because, you know, when you spend a lot of time on your own, you do tend to oh, talk. I do it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I think you, you make a very good point. It's it's that awareness of um, knowing that you know you have something going on, mm -hmm. and the 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 awareness really does help you manage it instead of react to whatever yeah. it may be. So I think that's yeah. a really great point for people, um, you know, really to focus on is like when you have those those moments, those feelings to really to step back and, or just sit back for five minutes and really focus on what what's causing it and and, and the why. I always think the why is important. Yeah. You know, and I know in coaching that's, you know, we always talk about the why. Why is this important? Why, why, why? And you get to that, like the fifth level of why. Yeah. And that's when you really get the answer that you're looking for. Exactly. So... Well, and like I say, when you look at emotional intelligence, it's made up of 26 different competencies. The first one you go through is self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I always want to start. So like I say, so it's sitting down, okay, when I'm, when I'm feeling this way, this is what I feel. Taking that, now what do I do? Take a breath. Mm -hmm. Just kind of, okay. And just in, in that two seconds of taking a deep breath when you feel it rising, will actually deactivate it and it allows your brain enough time to think of a strategy to get through it. Because if you allow it just to come up and overwhelm you, your amygdala now goes into its emotional state and the, the actual, you know, <clears throat> sorry, higher order you know, thinking brain doesn't have a chance at this point. Once the amygdala gets going, your, your higher order is like, hello, I'm over here. <laughs> Pay attention. I've got answers, but you're not seeing it at that point. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So it's that awareness of, of catching it before taking a breath, stepping back and then go, what do I need in this moment? Mm -hmm. And then once you know what you need, communicate that to the people around you. You know, like I've, I've told my partner, I said, you know, when I get to a certain point where I'm really frustrated and angry and with me, when I have strong emotions, I cry at them all. Right. So crying doesn't necessarily mean I'm sad or I'm hurt. It could just be I'm, I'm just experiencing a really strong emotion. I need to actually leave the room and just go be by myself for a moment to kind of collect myself. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come back. 
you know, then, but I need to have that moment because if you keep forcing me to have a conversation in that moment, you're not going to get anything coherent out of me at that moment, other than, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Because I can't access that in my brain. I need to go calm it down and then I can come back and talk logically. Yeah. Make, that makes sense. I love it. The neuroscientist in you just yes. came out. It was so cool. Yes. <laughs> kind of, hello, peek out. Yes. <laughs> but it is, like you say, and that's how I always look at that. That one step better is just the awareness. Be aware of what your behavior is. Be aware that if I continue down this path, this is what my repercussions are going to be. Or I can make a choice to do this other path and make a different result. Mm -hmm. Right? Because every emotion that comes up is a crossroads. Right. I can react this way or I can react this way. Know which way those paths are going to choose and choose one and be OK with what you know. So if I like, no, I choose to be angry today. Great. But also accept responsibility for what's going to happen afterwards. And I would say no judgment, too. If that's what you decide, you know, just go with it. Don't you know, don't be so judgy on yourself about yeah. it, too. I think oh, exactly. That women, we get stuck in that judgment piece. You know, I, uh, there was a, a, a lady at the gas station on the weekend when I was coming home from the long weekend, having a really bad day. All her, all the systems went down. Everybody was yelling at her. She was having an emotional breakdown behind the counter. And I just looked at her and I said, you're doing the best you can do. I said, you are, this is out of your control. You don't control the system. And she just kind of stopped and looked at me and she's like, oh my God, that's the best thing I've heard all day. Right. And sometimes we just need to have that, that, that moment of clarity of this is out of my control. I can choose to react to it in one way or another, which way am I going to choose? And right now, especially like you said, this last 18 months, we are all doing the best we are, do we can do in the moment. My moment today may not be so good. Maybe tomorrow will be better. Self-compassion. I like self compassion. You know, that's kind of one of the things I try to preach. And I'm trying to learn myself because I, I know I'm I'm the hardest person on me. Is this the self-compassion? And just reminding, I'm doing the best that I can in my moment. Mm -hmm. It's a very good point. I think that's a perfect point to to end on too. Mm -hmm. That self-compassion, a little bit better every day is really to focus a little more on ourselves and be more compassionate with who we are, where we are. Um and the fact that we have the ability to make those choices. Exactly. Sheila, thank you so much. Please tell everyone where they can connect with you, how they can find you, um, and how you can help them. Sure. Uh, my, my website is reigniteyourpurpose.com. You can find me both on Facebook and Instagram under the same one. Um, yeah, so connect with me there. And if you, you know, if you have questions, if you want to chat more about anything that we've said today, email me. It's just Sheila at reigniteyourpurpose.com. And we can, we can just start a conversation and, and see how I can best serve you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been great. I really look forward to uh, more conversations with you, uh, Sheila. Thank you. To our listeners, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, those of you catching us on the replay, if you have any questions, um, you can certainly um, uh, put those questions in uh, Facebook uh, or on YouTube. Uh, just let me know if you have any questions and either I will answer them or I will connect you directly with Sheila. So thank you, everyone. Don't forget we're here every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time join us here live. Um, and if you have anything else, you know, that you're looking for when it comes to your health and wellness, check out livinghealthylist.com. There's plenty there to help you live that healthy, happy life that you have been dreaming of. So until next week, I leave you with this healthy living, happy life. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.